This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 479. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, with my boy Chilla talking talking tech with you today, hanging out on the couch. He's matching. Oh, oh, well, well, in the video, it, it looks like you have a purple shirt on, but that's not actually not accurate. That, that could be back because I think I wore a purple uh, shirt last year. People were, or last week. I think people were just going to think I wear the same shirt every, week, <laughs> every day. I never change. It's just that camera. Actually, you look good there, but it looks like a purple shirt here. We got a fun color balance thing going on. So I guess a couple of different cameras in the mix. So you never know. And I think Chachi already has the show title. Uh, does he? Save it for the show, Jackass. Save it. <laughs> uh, and of course, producer Missy is here as well. Of course, we are talking, already talking to John Chachilla, the Gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. That's me. It's good to be here on this snowy evening. Yes. Not- it's coming and going. It's coming and going out there. I don't know. We can keep an eye out for it, I guess, a little bit later. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is the Awesome Cast. Check out everything at awesomecast.com, where you can find this in past episodes and show notes, uh, including links to a lot of the stuff that we talk about on the show. If you want to go check out any of it um, uh, later, uh, email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast, and please follow the Facebook page and group. And, of course, you can join us live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot of that discussion is happening on the Facebook page. If you want to be a part of that discussion, please join us over there. Of course, we are streaming on several other platforms for Sorgatron Media and Awesome Cast, including the Twitch, the YouTubes, and the Twitter, Periscopes, and and uh, and such. So if you're joining us over there, of course, the main conversation is happening over here on the Facebook page. And if you're catching this on podcast uh, form, of course, you can find us in all your podcast apps and watch us on Facebook and YouTube for Awesome Cast. Uh, and you catch us later, please use the hashtag AC479 to continue the conversation with that Awesome Cast on Twitter. Thank you to our audio partners, the 405media.com that's streaming us every day about noon Eastern and our friends at Post Industrial Audio, postindustrial.com, uh, showcasing some of the finest podcasting in Pittsburgh. And thank you for to them for uh, uh, telling the world about us too. Uh, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters that are supporting the show and they get a little bit extra conversation here and there. Including last week, we uh, kind of had some conversation about uh, Rise of Skywalker, uh, the last uh, Star Wars movie. Uh, that came out last month because we all finally had got a chance to see it. We had a uh, crazy Krause in here. Also, uh, uh, thank you to everybody at the coffee club level, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the fan of the show dollar level, our longest running uh, Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor, and uh, Katie's favorite Fedor, by the way, and PGAsmuseums.org. And you guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Okay. So you got a rant, so I'm going to start with something positive. Wait. Okay, <laughs> and mine mine won't be a real, really be a rant because I've now worked it over in my head that I have I have you're, an idea you're feeling, for a new product. You're feeling product. less less ranty. Yes, uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna pitch somebody some entrepreneur a, uh, a new idea. Is that mm-hmm. what's going to happen yes. now? All right. So so my my thing uh, this week is uh, I I've been revisiting one of my old favorite games that I haven't really played so much in recent years. I, 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 I hearken to the good old days of playing Call of Duty on the 360, uh, first with Modern Warfare 3, up through Black Ops uh, 2, I think it was, 1 and 2, Ghosts, things like that, right? And, and, and that was like a good era for me. And this has been out for a little bit now, but again, with that that thing we were talking about before, with the with the game controller and uh, you know using an Xbox One controller with my uh, uh, that 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 hook thingy that holds your phone on your controller you can use that, that, that same thing i'll work with a play playstation controller yeah i'll work too, with the playstation so. controller i'll work with a steel series that i have that works with the apple uh stuff but it's nice just having an xbox controller like that's what feels good to me right because mm-hmm. I, I play most things on an xbox one so it saves 
it, it just feels um, uh, one-to-one with that, right, for the most part when I play games. So I've been playing Call of Duty Mobile. And uh, and we've, we've talked about it before on the show. But again, it just feels so much more uh, with a controller. I mean, the only kind of difference is you don't actually hit shoot. It auto-shoots, basically, which is like... like I thought, there was a way, I thought there was a way to configure it where you could. Is make, there? I think I have mine set up where it doesn't auto shoot. Like I have to hit a fire button on the right. So now I, I can it, hold it down. Right. So it's still, but, yeah, yes. But but otherwise, it still mostly works that way. Um, it gives you one less thing you have to press. It, it makes sense for the touch controls. But when you use the controller, like other than that, like other than that one little weirdness to it, it is very like it feels like Call of Duty. What well, it has the classic maps like it has Nuke Town. It has Nuke Town. It has hijacked. Mm. Like it has the stuff I want to play because I'm like I don't want to jump into. I don't want to dust off my old like you know Modern Warfare uh, uh, Black Ops disc on the on the 360 because I got to boot up the 360 and um, I'll just get murdered because all that's there are the people that are like have been playing it for years mm-hmm. and still want to play it. Um, so. This has been kind of a nice little, uh, a nice little return, and and then it's on the phone, and I'm playing it, and and to be honest, I'm playing this like in bed, <laughs> you know. Before I go to bed, I just pull it up, play some stuff for a little bit, and it's there, and it throws it on the nightstand like I would like a Game Boy Advance that I have there, right? Like I'm playing, but I'm playing full Call of Duty that looks just as good as the 360 to me, and plays just as I remember. Um, so it, 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 and, and it's free. I'm not doing the premium stuff. I'm not buying season passes. I just want to play. But now they also have a battle royal as well, because every game has a battle royal mode now. Why not? Is that free too? It's yeah, it's, it's free too. It, it, you got to buy a pass to get all like, the upgrades, the tier upgrades and things like that. So it's like, no, I'll just play and that that's fine. Um, of course. So it's, it's, and it's everything you think. A Fortnite. It's got the uh, uh, closing zone on it. You jump out of par- uh, on a parachute. Uh, have to, you have no weapons when you start, uh, which is strange for Call of Duty to me. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. but it feels like Call of Duty otherwise. Um, and well, actually, I think there's a third. You could do third person in it, which is very not Call of Duty. Um, and I won my first one, which makes me kind of concerned. But <laughs> it's like well, that's, I-, I noticed how like I felt like I was way too good. When I played, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I shouldn't a little be, bit. Yeah. I shouldn't be this good. Yeah. So it, maybe they're, they're kind of like looping in bots or something, uh, uh you know, instead or, or, or something. But I, I think in the multiplayer, because it's a very explicit a versus AI mode that they tell you to try out for, um, for practicing or something like that. So, uh, battle, <laughs> Chachi's saying battle Royal is the first thing to happen to first person shooters. Mostly they're third person. Should be worse fair. than, worse than, when we got rid of like storyline gameplay, yeah, maybe, maybe. Because uh, I missed the old school story. I I played the storyline on Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, I loved how like sim- cinematic they were, right? And then they started to slowly peel off. Yeah, they well they got shorter and shorter, and then because you didn't really play it for like you just played through to play the story and like hey look at this cool stuff, and then like you understand some of the guns a bit more when you get into the multiplayer. Makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like uh, I, I'm finally, uh, I've had it for over a year, and I'm finally playing through the story on Mortal Kombat 10. <laughs> so, and, and, and realizing like, oh, I've never played as this, char- as this character before. Because I just jump in and hit random and, and play something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's kind of nice. Oh, he says it's the worst p- player versus player wise. Uh, mm, is it? I don't know. I don't know the thinking on that. So, like. Versus versus squads or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm or? guess yeah, I'm guessing because it's no one wants. That's the other thing I noticed in like battle royale. Like everything has like a squad up, but I never like I don't know anyone who does squads on that. They just jump no, into a game. Yeah, you just jump into. Like, a game. I feel like I, I will say I feel like it's broken. The hey, I'm gonna jump on Xbox. Look for specific people. Yeah, and co-op somebody has or to be team doing up. somebody has to be doing that but at call of duty like i feel like i can drop into a, a game of frontline which is team-based a team-based waypoint spawn point game um and mostly you can kind of work together without chat mm-hmm. or you realize oh none of these guys know what they're doing we're getting slammed right now but <clears throat> and i was probably always a, maybe a little different because i was never big on mm-hmm. even team deathmatch mm-hmm. Like I was never free for all. 
rarely did I want to do team deathmatch. <laughs> I was always a capture the flag. What was the what was the one Call of Duty thing where you had to defuse the bomb? Like there was the one you, the team had to plant the bomb or you had to defuse the bomb before it went yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> like those I the, can't remember the, the, names. the kind of strategy mm-hmm. type gameplay were the ones I was into as well, which I don't feel like battle royale lends itself to at all no no it, it's kind of it, yeah it's kind of more free for all i mean maybe, maybe squad based to to kind of organize around something like that search and destroy search and destroy okay yeah yeah i i miss the old announcer voice too so oh good my mom's here so we can get to that story here in a little bit that i was going to bring up oh, i thought she was going to talk about her favorite call of duty game type <laughs> uh chilla what is your awesome thing of the so, week i'm actually excited about this okay but you said I'm, you were gonna I'm rant con- on i'm something. concerned okay so remember bump. cautiously optimistic bump so bump we used to be able to share our contacts and yeah different well, stuff by, how did we do that by bumping our fists with our phones in them. basically fist bumping with your phone in the hand in your hand somewhere <laughs> between bluetooth and your what gps and and uh, dry, gyrometer or whatever um it, it was figure out that you two bumped each other and then of course we played with this and we would like have, you would like, try to yeah. a bunch of people bump simultaneously and who gets what yeah yeah where, where we get and we're at a, a pod camp pre uh, uh pre-party and somebody across the room it was like hey is one of you michael you know <laughs> it's like a spin the bottle <laughs> it of is. it data. kind of is yeah and we're all worried about privacy right um <laughs> But so Google announced that they're going to release, and it's the second article, nearby sharing, which is going to be the airdrop of the Google world, Mm -hmm. which I'm a huge airdrop person. Mm -hmm. I airdrop photos to other people. I airdrop files to other people. I airdrop files between my laptop and my phone. It's a great fun. I get pissed when I'm at home. And realize my uh, my Windows 10 computer isn't going to copy and paste an AirDrop to my to my phone. Right, like that's the only thing that kills me on my workflow right so, now. So I use AirDrop a lot, more than I would like to admit. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I use it daily, but do I use it multiple times a week? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's like a GIF and a message that i save off and then drop like i use airdrop before i copy something to the cloud and then copy it back down oh on yeah the other side. yeah then it feels pretty ham-fisted at that point <laughs> <laughs> i mean at the very least like my, my my workaround is putting it in my icloud or, or logging in icloud icloud.com we just interface that way which is nice at least it's an option right mm-hmm. or so. I, I can put it in google drive i can put it in dropbox i can put it in one drive i have i have i'm like a digital hoarder that just left crap everywhere mm-hmm. like i filled up filled up my dropbox that's fine i move over to the one drive i got a terabyte over there when that gets full i'll move somewhere else and just leave everything in its place anyway so google release or quietly underground whatever announced they're going to be coming out with nearby sharing mm-hmm. which is like the airdrop of for android devices it's going to hit pixel devices from what I've read first, which I think is super cool. And hopefully they that proliferates outwards, or we at least get APKs that we can sideload to other devices, and we can do nearby sharing. Then Samsung, we find out, is building a rival called QuickShare. And this is why we can't have nice things <laughs> in the Android world. So what we and it's going to release in tandem with the Galaxy S cuz we can't just go S10 S11. Mm-hmm. We have to double and go to S20. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, what? So the theory oh, is they're going is that year now, aren't they? I, I don't know. It's like car models <laughs> your phone. <laughs> So the S20 Plus 5G, um, they found the APK that's, that is showing the quick share. So you'll be able to quickly transfer between two Galaxy phones. Okay. But what if my friend has an LG or my friend has a Pixel? Oh, what kind of phone do you have? Oh, we can't. We can't. It, yeah. 
Yeah, and so, this leads to the problem. The, right. I'm glad they're going in this direction. The other interesting thing I think Samsung has on their side is you can send to smart things devices. Mm-hmm. So I could send something to my TV. I could send something to my refrigerator. If they're all if they're all Samsung. If they're smart things. Yes. Smarter things. Um, or smart things. So I'm super happy they're going in this direction. I'm seeing uh, I'm interested to see how this work out works out. As a callback to bump, here's my idea. Let's create an old school thank you app <laughs> that's cross platform mm-hmm. that you select the file. The other person sets to receive. Mm -hmm. You shake your device. It makes modem screech noises. The (laughs) other one makes a modem screech noise back. I love it. And then we just ship it over Bluetooth and call it a day. (laughs) And it's, but I mean, to me, that's the the dream, right? It's the old bump. It bump didn't, it didn't matter. It had, they had an Android app. Uh, Did they? I think so. I'm not aware. I, I think they had an Android app. Okay. I mean, this should just be cross-platform. It should be Windows, laptop, iPhone, Android. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your operating ties in. Whatever your operating system is, someone needs to just come up with an easy way Mm -hmm. to go cross-platform. And that's what makes it universal. Uh, If you're an Android user... And, uh, and and don't know the importance of an airdrop. Uh, you know, this is, again, you can airdrop and just basically move a file wirelessly between Apple devices, including iPad, iPhone, and, and your, your MacBook, basically, right? Um, Potter's saying that uh, he used airdrop to share photos at a family event directly to other phones without having to upload it to Facebook or anything. Uh, Steve of uh, Pittsburgh Bolt Sports, who will be here Sunday, Sunday, by the way, for the Sunday yearly uh, Sunday brunch uh, episode, uh, Amanda has him uh, airdrop her so much uh, as, as he as he goes to uh, pressers during the day that she can't make. Uh, it's an issue doing so with longer videos they found, though, which makes sense, right? It's more kind of quicker files at that point. But Chilla, it needs to take uh, take 10 minutes to transfer <laughs> to get the old-time feel. Well, I, you know what? Maybe we have to put the devices in a quiet room, and we actually use like the old modem Oof. tones He's to the transfer the tones, data. And then the pictures just kind of, as they load <laughs> down the screen. Yes. I appreciate Hoopla um, that I connected my library to watch comic books or read comic books. When it's downloading the the file, it's the cover of the comic book slide like loading like a three hundred baud like, modem like a three hundred <laughs> baud modem uh, back in the day. It's just like oh that feels nice. I don't know if that's intentional, but that's a nice touch. So, anyways, so so you have your new idea. We'll see if fair play works for Android. Or if anyone out there has a good way, like I've used, I can't remember what the name of the app is now. I have it on my Android, and I have it on my iPad. Mm-hmm. there's like a i have a program just for photos that actually turns your device into like a wi-fi server okay and the you load the app on both devices and you can pass stuff on your camera roll back and forth across operating systems but it doesn't necessarily do files which i find myself oddly enough more and more like i have a spreadsheet i updated on my ipad that i need to get over to another device and i'm using things like OneDrive for that Mm -hmm. or google drive um but it would be nice you know to just be out and about and just pass stuff back without having to have some intermediary network to turn on to Mm -hmm. connect to you work with so many devices uh day day to day it must be you do you get a relief you're like oh good this is an apple device i can do this thing (laughs) Yes and no, because in my personal life, yes. In Mm. my professional life, no, because everything is based on like Mm. SharePoint synchronization and you have a grander kind of. Yeah, but I have found out testing devices for work. I now have I now have a directory. I used to put everything. I was like a desktop pack rat. Mm -hmm. And like once a month, I would take everything on my desktop and move it into a folder. And then start over again. And then at the end of the month, move all the stuff into the desktop, into that folder, just to keep the desktop kind of clean. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I started having multiple devices. So now that 
desktop folder is a link to a OneDrive <laughs> that then I that folder that link goes to every device mm -hmm. and then OneDrive syncs Across. locally yeah. to the devices. So I have yeah. the same that folder is just the same on every machine and it's always synchronized. I like um, that. It, we, and uh, and I've done versions of that as well. Did, now did we freeze? We did for a moment. We should be okay. back. Okay. Oh no, we froze. Oh, oh no, you all froze. It all froze. All right, we'll do the thing. Hold on, guys. Well, hey, you know, you know why everything's freezing because uh, everything's hungry. Uh, because it's time to talk about our good friend Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Thank you so much for those guys supporting this show. The majority of our near ten years in existence. On the awesome cast, be celebrating that this year. Uh, of course, uh, supporting the show here, hey, we, we had to support them back uh, this uh, this Sunday when uh, we uh, had our Royal Rumble viewing party. Get a nice uh, uh, bit there. Uh, also, not just pizzas, we got some salad action because some of us are uh, trying to watch our figures <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, the, but go check them out. They're here in Beachview, here in Carnegie East End, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates when they do things. Um, so they'll take any sub and they'll make it into a pizza and vice versa. That is. That Will is. they take any pizza and make it into a salad? Can I get a chicken pesto pie salad? Why not? Can I get a slaughterhouse salad? <laughs> good ideas. Good ideas. Five uh, meats on my salad. Five meats of Some salad. good old you know Italian what? dressing. Listen, can we just skip the lettuce and just put all the meats in the salad? Some roasted red peppers. That would be really just good. Of, it's just kind of a meat salad. Yeah. Let's we'll throw some lettuce in there. These are good some ideas. Greens. Slice, you can have these. Uh, <laughs> so check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. All right. We got a lot of submitted stories here as well. So uh, our good friends uh, over on the Facebook group uh, submitted a lot of stuff. Salad is weak. Weak. Salads. Hey, salads can kick ass. You just I got some good salads. You're just not eating the right salads. First of all, this is the one that my mom's going to try out because she's got a newer phone. Uh, I we have we have a iPhone iPhone tens and iPhone um, eight here eight plus here, but this this starts with the X and the XS. Uh, I'm sorry, the XS the ten S. I don't know how are we naming these things. Ah, Shilla, what what is what is this filmic thing that a uh, uh, partner shared with us? Help me out here. So it allows you to use multiple cameras mm -hmm. on the device to record simultaneously and we're talking about the big the big thing here is using the front facing and the rear cameras at the same time food bloggers will i'm sure all screamed out oh in yeah pleasure. and we knew this was coming we kind of had a preview <clears throat> of this previously right they showed this on stage mm -hmm. at the iphone announcement and i think there they showed recording with all with three or four cameras simultaneously. I don't, so does this this, this one a, just does two simultaneously? So, so I'm two simultaneously. Okay. Um, and they this is using an, a separate app, right? Uh, yeah. Double using, take. It's using the the Filmic Double Take app, and it'll be coming to the Filmic Pro app mm -hmm. as well later this spring. So I'm interested when it comes to the Filmic Pro, is it going to pick up more cameras? Yeah, so so when it's so so far, even if if you have like the newer um, plus ones with with multiple lenses on the back, it'll show you all of those lenses. And you have the option, at least in the from what I saw in the double take app, you have the option of recording both streams mm -hmm. separately mm -hmm. as like separate files, mm -hmm. and then or you you can record. Like the picture in picture mm -hmm. as like a stamped video where that's gonna be your output. So if you wanna if you wanna edit in post and put it all together after the fact, you can do that. Or you can have it record it as you're seeing on your screen where where you can do picture in picture, you can do side by side. Mm -hmm. Where I th the the whole food bloggers I, all I can think of is, you know. The video of the plate with the small picture and picture of the person talking about the delicious hipster food they're about to eat. Yep, and you're gonna see a lot of picture and picture YouTube soon, very soon, shortly when this thing uh, starts rolling out. So look forward to that. But yeah, it's the Filmic app, and uh, and you can go check that out. The Filmic Double Take app 
Uh, you can download that right now and test it out. And if you have one of those uh, cameras from the last two years, I guess. So, <laughs> so uh, scope that out. Um, let's see. We also have, so actually Chris Whitlatch um, posted this first and I had reposted it. Uh, sorry for that. But there, uh, so Atari has licensed their brand to uh, build uh, the first of, I think, six locations for an a, a Atari game themed hotel, uh, first one in Phoenix, of course. So this is interesting because this is going to be, uh, according to this, uh, it's going to have an esports studio. Um, no details about um, what what the, these will include. They also have something called Atari Gaming Playgrounds, which I, we presume will be. Uh, where the rest of us normal non-competitive players can play, uh, as well as uh, accommodations like in standard pole, gym, restaurants, bakeries, movie theaters, thing, things like that. Um, it's a licensing deal, and uh, for for they, they had an advance of six hundred thousand dollars, which seems light for a licensing deal like this. But they're also it's also non-exclusive, so Atari can build further themed hotels like this in the future. Uh, and these are looking to come to, in the coming years, to uh, Austin, Chicago, Denver, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and San Jose, and Seattle uh, afterwards. So you'll have a few options to, to check one of these out. That might be good for a run. Based uh, on the fact that Replay FX is, comes to Pittsburgh every year, I yes. think we need well, one of these. Two. Well, they're very Pittsburgh-based. Replay FX should just do a Replay FX hotel. Ah. Uh, wow. Get behind that. There you go. There you go. Hey, they're not. Can a nonprofit run a hotel? I don't know if that works, but I don't see why not. They're officially a nonprofit. There, it's a it's a historical situation. So. It's a historical site. It is well, not a site or we well, got to find a historical it's like site. A museum. So I don't think they have a public thing yet. So, but um, I don't know. Sooner or later. Anyways, uh, what else we got? And I know you guys were talking a lot about that here um, in, in the uh, chats, of, or I'm sorry, the uh, Facebook page as well. Um, this is a big one. Chilla, I told you, you, had, you needed to go download this before we started the show so you could uh, play it on your service because uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's going to run on there. So there is a cat fighting game that the Riz actually shared with us. Riz plays games. We'll give them a little plug there. Uh, it's a cat fighting game. And uh, it is, I think they're they're with a Patreon right now. Let's see. There's a little visual of the fighting game. It's a. Uh, you asked me if it was Mortal Kombat style, and I said it was more Wu Tang Clan. Uh, it's that uh, isometric uh, move. You know, moving in a 3D space fighting kind of situation. Uh, you can download on PC a demo now, um, and it's a uh, name your own price. Um, it's a physics based party game featuring cats. So you can do that right now on uh, PCs, uh, Windows machines. And yeah, it, 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 I'm seeing that it's, it looks like it's a, it's a, the demo is multiplayer only. So you have to have at least two players uh, in order to play it. Is it a battle royale? Yeah, it's it's kind of, no 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 <laughs> not a battle royale, just multiplayer. Chachi's not going to. Oh, like and it. you can take pictures with your your cats and everything. Uh, so you can go check that out. Uh, you know, jelly bean versus sausage. Uh, wait, wait, wait. It, it says ready, tussle. That's <laughs> the fight screen. This is fantastic. So please go go check that out. It's it's over at... Um, the, the game is called uh, Fist of Fluffs. Fist of Fluffs. Yes, Fist of Fluffs, like Fist of Cuffs. So uh, you can check that out. It's at uh, playfellowstudio.itch.io Really? Slash Fist of dash fluffs dash demo that's a long url you can just click uh click in our show notes uh, to check that out too so go check that that's, that's a fun thing going on um so thank you thanks riz for sharing that we, we're gonna have to get that in here and play that a little bit hey guys there's a lot of stuff going on a lot of stuff that the uh we're doing with our in-house production of course we do um we, we do a lot of stuff here with the uh podcasting that bores chilla <laughs> God, you're yawning. Um, so it's been a long week. It's, it's been a long Tuesday. week. It's been a long podcast. Um, but we do a lot of stuff here. But also a lot of a lot of what we learn to do here in the podcasting world with Awesome Cast and other productions we're doing for clients as well. And that's happening over with Sidekick Media Services. Uh, let us be the sidekick in your superhero project. 
Uh, we're gearing up for some uh, pretty big uh, recordings, uh, 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 a lot of podcasts uh, that we're working with uh, as well. You can check all that music videos. We we're just talking with somebody about music videos again the other day. Um, go check them out. Uh, check out the corporate videos. I did an interesting ad today. That some of you know about that I'm not going to get into right now. Um, but uh, you can go see what we've been doing. Sidekick Media Services. Uh, check out the Instagram to see uh, what we've been up to lately and uh, some of the behind the scenes of our productions, including MMA, professional wrestling, live events, podcasting, video podcasting, uh, a lot going on over there, including uh, helping our friends at pghmuseums.org with our website too. Uh, so go see what we made there. And and uh, a part of this, hey, we got a new Sorgatron Media website, sorgatronmedia.com. We went all Squarespace, finally updated from the old dusty WordPress. Uh, and uh, it, it's nice and nice and reactive, responsive uh, design and everything, which we were well overdue uh, for that site. It's probably the oldest, it's probably the oldest website we've been running and, uh, for a while. So go check that out too and, and, and see what else is going on, including our friends at Thrifty, Bardic uh, Mystery Tour, and such. Hey, I meant to bring up in the last section, but I give a shout out to our buddy Chachi, who's been hanging out in the chat room, uh, thegamejourney.com. He's, uh, of course, still rolling through. I believe we are in the, is this the Genesis era, I think? Gunstar Heroes, Columns, oh yeah. Uh, Earthworm Jim he's digging on. Um, Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament. I didn't know about the sequel, actually. Yeah, I never, I don't think I, that's one game I didn't Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe. This was a weird era where there were sequels to games I didn't know there were a first one of. (laughs) <laughs> so um but there you go go check it out he's reviewing them uh and uh, uh furthering his writing adventures uh the game journey.com if you want to follow along with that all right back to stories uh Shella, you were getting into we were talking about one before the show that i wanted to talk about here hope this doesn't lead to a takedown here i'm going to show a little bit of the trailer have you seen this one called the circle of course you saw the trailer <laughs> so, I didn't see the tra- so I haven't seen it. This looks super interesting, and I have so many questions about it's, it's like how this is going to work. It's like Big Brother. I think the entire thing's already out, but it was uh, recommended to me, um, and I don't know how old it is, but it's relatively recent. I think it's called The Circle. Basically, they're living in a house. They are not. They don't meet each other. Everybody interacts specifically on a tailor-made social media for this game. It's a competitive game. People are getting blocked and eliminated as you go. Some people are not being themselves. One guy is straight up just pretending to be his own girlfriend, apparently. Uh, so, um, so and, and, and hijinks ensue. It was apparently a three-week event that they did. Uh, again, it does feel very Big Brother to me. Um, not that I've watched a lot of Big Brother, but I have a lot of friends who have. Uh, so... Um, but, uh, it, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting, it, it was inevitable. I'm sure I'm, I'm surprised we didn't have a social media based game show like this other than at midnight, um, which really wasn't a game show. It was more like a, uh, it was more like a, uh, 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 whose line is it for social media? Uh, when that was, out. I missed that game. Um, I hope this doesn't cause a landslide of other Netflix what reality, reality shows? well you know what the great thing is it's netflix you don't have to watch it yeah but they do such good content mm-hmm. i'm i'm concerned they're gonna see the oh look we can spin up 50 million of these real cheap and it's going to be the center of their focus that's what happens to every network isn't it well, that, let's hope they don't make the same mistake reality tv shows netflix official site I wonder how many of these are, are Netflix Netflix originals. I mean, well, if, when you go in there, there's a lot of the, um, well, there's the food ones. They're, well, I guess are they reality shows or more kind of documentaries when they're doing? There actually, there is like a, a food um, uh, reality game show of sorts on there that I've seen. Is there? I haven't seen that one. Um, I can't remember. We what the do name watch was. a lot of. There's oh. the prank encounters. There's you versus wild. I'm I'm trying to find the ones uh, with Netflix uh, uh, tags on them. Final table uh car masters let's see hyperdrive um ultimate beast master which i think is like a ninja warrior kind of thing storage well storage that's not exclusive sugar rush christmas so that's one of those bake-off kind of ones travel and adventure reality no they're they're already pretty 
See, that's the secret. And there's the circle that we we're just talking about. Great British, great British baking shows on here. I'm sure some of these. But that's, they, but that's something that, they that's something they bought from somewhere else. That's probably. that's actually on TV, right? Yeah. They, yeah. Taco Chronicles. Come on. <laughs> but circles like they're original. <laughs> yeah, it's an original, and I, and I think a lot of these are going to be uh, nailed. It I think is theirs as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which is a, a, I believe, Truth a pick puppet show. That's what it looks like. <laughs> the toys that made us. And well, they're always doing documentaries. That's so. a document. Yeah. Again, I think the documentaries I find extremely it interesting, informational. It the- meshes a little bit because there's the food and travel TV stuff like Taco Chronicles. Mm-hmm. I need to check that out. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Wait, wait, what is this one? Tiny, uh, Tiny House Nation. No, no, that's not one of theirs. Actually. That's. Tiny house. That sounds like one of the Hold HGTV. On. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, they're right next to the stuff, and you have to look for the little N in the corner, and I'm missing it here and there. So, but uh, they, I mean, they're they're going to have a bunch of them, and and of course they're going to make the headlines with the Witchers and the Adam Sandler movies, right? Mm-hmm. And Ryan Reynolds and the Rock movies and things like that. But which apparently that Six Below is turning into a franchise. Interesting. Hmm. Did you watch it? Like it was okay, but I didn't realize it was franchisable. But I don't know. Oh, there's a Beastie Boys documentary coming to Apple TV. There you go. Everybody, everybody's got stuff coming. <clears throat> I, I, I'm looking forward on Apple TV. There's the uh, video game show from the one guy from uh, It's Always Sunny in, Fel- in uh, Philadelphia. Oh, I didn't see that. It looks like it really feels like it's being positioned in the uh, Hey Silicon Valley is done. Well, don't you want to watch this? So, <laughs> um, I can't. The name's kind of complicated, and I haven't really. I just saw it advertised on something else that I was watching, <laughs> like like on uh, uh, the Comedy Central app or something. It's advertising it. Anyways, um, what else do we got? Chilla, you got a few stories in here. You you have the TikTok story, uh, dude. I, you, I am you, I am to you TikTok like, like my Dutters, heart. Dutters is to porn. Jeez. What? So, well, <laughs> I don't know about that one. So tell me about this. So there is, and I can't remember the guy's name, um, but someone has taken to TikTok and he is recreating into the Spider-Verse scenes with his family live mm-hmm. on TikTok. And he kind of has like a little picture in picture that shows like the end of the spider verse and they're using the audio like the voiceovers and everything are from the movie and they're just kind of pantomiming to it yeah and it's super impressive i mean he they do a his dad in the cop car like his dad's in a cop car like the the whole he's getting ready for school Mm -hmm. uh, grabbing stuff around his room making his way through the kitchen like all like he's really good at reenacting this and Mm -hmm. syncing them up to the end of the spider verse scenes. It's one of those things where I could just sit there and watch this until I run out of his clips to watch. So, uh, just underscore Genoa, uh, J E N O A H underscore on the, uh, uh, TikToks If you want to check that out. And we have an article linked with a couple of them embedded over there. I like the TikTok in embed. I, our friend, um, uh, run out hunt the rev. Uh, he's, he's getting pretty big in the wrestling scene. He started TikTok like a month ago, and he has like something like thirteen thousand views and likes and stuff. Like he exploded out. Well, he's like a TV and a wrestling personality too. So I, I yeah, know, but he, I've seen, he knows how to do that. But I've seen a lot of people kind of move into this platform and gain followers ridiculously quickly. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's their algorithm for you search for one thing and you kind of go down this rabbit hole and and it's so much. Are there viewers? Or are their their users just? So oh, I'll subscribe to this. Oh, how's, I'll subscribe how's to this. The I'll Chilla, subscribe to how's this. the Chilla TikTok coming? I don't, I I don't have any content <laughs> for TikTok. You just like review a thing, review a thing. Like here, you see this pencil? Like just grab something in your office and just do a quick review <laughs> and see where it goes from there, right? I could do like home renovations. Yeah, thirty second home renovation tips. Yeah, check out my floating iMac. Yes, I mean really, I mean honestly. But it, it, that would probably be good for you. Do you have a hacksaw? Because you're going to need one. Yes. <laughs> Chilla with a. Oh, at Chilla with a hacksaw on TikTok. Right? <laughs> yep. Chilla with a hacksaw. I mean, that alone is going to get you a uh, view. Somebody's taken that by now, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> it's so, already gone. Uh, speaking of short form video, uh, there was a story this week that the Vine co founder 
has come back and brought back the spirit of Vine, which isn't that TikTok, actually, uh, <laughs> to be honest. It's called Byte, B-Y-T-E, as you would think in the computer side. And uh, I did download it, and I did log into it, and that's all I got so far. Uh, so <laughs> it's there, and again, it seems very TikTok-y, right? For the most part, it's the full full screen video, vertical video kind of situation. Vine was kind of a square thing. Uh, six second looping videos and a new community for people who love them. Mm, so the thing that I found interesting in Vine was the people that could get a really good loop going where it looked it looked kind of it, like it was it was in a loop. It like, was in like it was a natural loop. Mm -hmm. Like those mm -hmm. were the ones that impressed me. Um, which the TikTok, like how they kind of record half the clip or segments of the clip and make things disappear or make different things happen, but it all looks mm -hmm. natural. Those are the, the kind of special effect like videos are the ones that get me. So I did not download Byte yet, but I am now. So I, I wonder if Chilla is our, Chilla with a hacksaw is already. <laughs> you should get both of them. So it was actually kind of interesting. I'm Sorgatron on there, by the way. Please friend me if you're on Byte. Also, if you're on TikTok, because I'm still figuring out what to do with them. Um, I, so interesting. This is the first time I experienced this too, Chilla. Um, sign in with Apple. What oh, I used that on another that, service. That's the last first week. one that I've seen like this. It pulls it up and 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 it will. And and I think they talked about this when iOS 13 was first being announced, right? And so it gives you a choice a, that you can sign in with your email and also sign in and hide your email as well. Like, do you want it to be seen to other people they, they through like the service? They spin you up a iCloud.com yeah, yeah. email on the fly. And you can set it up that anything that goes to that account, like in your setup process, and it just pops up like you're, if you were buying something on the App Store or something, like it pops up from the bottom and uses your thumbprint and everything. So you can do it all that way. And I imagine that means if I log in on a computer, like through a website, it should come through too on my, on my, um, on my Touch ID enabled laptop, I, I guess. Um, so, it, so that was a new thing. Also, hey, this just came out. It already has a spam problem, Chilla. <laughs> so the uh, they vowed to fix its spam problem. It, it's a comment problem, of course, but a lot of these are going to get into that too. So, especially this coming from uh, a former, the former Vine person, and uh, and 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 the height of TikTok that maybe has already solved some of these problems. Um, of course, people are going to hit it pretty hard with spam. So, well, we'll see how what what happens with that. We'll see if we get some bites going. We'll start an awesome. Chilla was bite. taken. Chilla was taken. I see Chilla five seven nine has that's, uh, followed that's, me. That's me. well, you didn't try Chilla with the hacksaw. That's too long. It's too long. Too many letters. Man, that could be another account for you. I mean, I, we would, maybe yeah. maybe when Byte offers like multi user login. There you go. Uh, just you taking the hacks out of electronic equipment here and there. That'd be great. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Phone soap. Chilla, phone soap. do you need phone soap? Does it clean your phone? This was an ad. Or is it like a bar of soap that's shaped like a phone? This is an ad that came up on Facebook. And really, that is, that is kind of good discovery for this. So the idea is, hey, our phones are really freaking dirty. There was a guy on... Shark Tank trying to peddle this kind of stuff. I've seen these. Is it types the, of was things it this before. kind of thing? Okay, yeah. well, apparently somebody did it, and it's introducing Phone Soap Pro, the next evolution. <laughs> so the idea is, you have a case, or you have this little uh, home soap. Uh, uh, what, what is a perfect household disinfection? Maybe they're doing more than just phones, I guess. Um, but the idea is that let's see, why UVC. It actually blasts your phone, if I got this right, with UVC rays to kill the bacteria on your phones because your our phones are the dirtiest things, and we're putting them by our face and we're handling them every dirty. day. Like this is a problem. This is a pretty big problem. Should probably wipe down my phone like once a day, to be honest. Um, and I got a case, so I can do that. So you can check that out. It's at phonesoap.com, and it's one of those. <laughs> It caught my attention because it's like a picture of somebody like on the toilet with their phone. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, and and I probably saw it, to be honest, on the toilet holding my phone. Because, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the other metric. That's the unknown metric. How many people saw that? 
and we're just like, oh, that's me right now. Oh, this is kind of disgusting. Bye. <laughs> so if anything is effective, even be- even if you're, even if you don't have your phone in your hand while you're going to the bathroom, yeah. Like think about, like we saw that little folder type thing, like that thing above the toilet paper where you could set your phone Mm -hmm. like it was like a little area to put your phone didn't we show that on the show i can't remember um or you take your phone and you put it on the back of the toilet or you take your phone and put it on the top just in the room it's it's you know there are things bacteria germaphobes have figured this bad things in there um yeah this is (laughs) it's an interesting idea I don't know. Uh, Chilla, what's going on in Pokemon? Is it time for me to come so, back to Pokemon? So I don't, so, and I think we've talked about this on the show before. I am, maybe, I mean, we probably need like a professional gamer like Chachi to, mm. to do this justice. Okay. But so Pokemon is coming out with, what's it called? Pokemon Home. Okay. I'll put a link. Yeah, I got it. I have it open yep, over there here. There you go. And I think it probably explains it better as you get down into the the charts of what's supported on what platform. But what this is, it's going to be a monthly service because everything needs to be a monthly service. A subscription service you pay for. Subscription service. It's it's like a battle royale. Um, It's going to allow you to trade Pokemon four different ways. There's going to be this thing called a Wonder Box. You're going to be able to put Pokemon in the Wonder Box and trade them around the world even when home is not being used. There's going to be a global trading system where you can post the Pokemon you want, the Pokemon you're willing to trade, and then it'll find other people that are a match for you. It's like Tinder for Pokemon trading, and it'll complete the trade. There'll be a trade room that 20 people can go into and you'll be able to trade your Pokemon in that room. You also have friend trading. Mm -hmm. It also seems like it'll make it easier to move, to track your Pokemon that you have across devices and games as well as move Pokemon between the games. Mm-hmm. Um, what I what I thought was interesting, it all comes at a monthly fee. Um, there is a basic. It's a low. It's like a dollar thirty three a month, though. The three month plan is five bucks. Comes out to a buck sixty six. Okay. Um. If you buy a year for sixteen dollars, it comes out to a dollar thirty-three. So at least I you think can pay three bucks a month. Nintendo things when they do subscription is cheap. It is cheap, at least. But, but I also feel like it's cheap. But what am I getting? Yeah, yeah. Like I Listen. do pay for their online, and I get that whole back catalog. Yeah, but I really don't have good voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> so like, there's definite trade-offs mm-hmm. to the the extent of what their service offers i mean it's not like i'm getting multiple things here for this dollars i'm getting pokemon trading Mm -hmm. and and in some cases only certain things on the switch only certain things on the phone some things on both yeah um i don't even understand what the whole mystery gifts So on the mobile phone, you'll get mystery gifts, but you won't on the Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can judge, but I can get my Pokemon judged (laughs) cross-platform. That's important. Listen, somebody who's that into Pokemon, these are important things. I'm sure. I I know they are very important This is not for us kind of more uh, uh, casual Pokemon players, probably, right? Yes. So. I mean, I'm amazed at how many people are on Twitch just playing pokemon like pokemon go or just no pokemon i, I see, in general? see more on like the sword and shield or mm-hmm. like the new ones mm-hmm. interesting like yeah. the nintendo switch all right well i think on that note 
I think we're ready to wrap up here. It's a uh, it's about chill at time. You got to go catch them all. I got to go catch them all. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so uh, uh, go check out uh, everything. Uh, of course, uh, the awesome cast facebook group uh we're talking about by the way a follow-up here steve's talking about as a bartender a dab of vodka works really well uh <laughs> the, uh and, and your screen comes out looking great he says works for glasses clean them uh use vodka windex water spray for the windows <laughs> that's great so those are there's your hot tip for this week's awesome cast guys so, anyways, go check everything out. Uh, awesomecast.com, soccertronmedia.com. Uh, we got a lot of stuff uh, going on, of course, with the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, live this week. We'll have a video game stream uh, Friday night with our friends, our pro wrestling friends, uh, going on over on the Indie Wrestling Night US Twitch as well. Uh, if you guys want to join us over there, Chilla is chillitech.net and soon Chilla with a hacksaw. Chilla on the Twitter, <laughs> Chilla579 on the bite. On bite, follow yeah. him on bite. Follow me on bite. Figure out what we do with this thing. Let's so. let's put some bites together. Some they should have called it bit, and multiple people got to, got eight people would have made a bite. <laughs> Your group of eight people is a bite. <laughs> yes, I like it. I like it. That is some geek math. Uh, awesome, right there. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.